Oh, we do have big news. We do. Oh my gosh, we got so distracted. We are going back on tour. Yeah. Big exciting news. Humble fans, part two. What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Bri and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Friday. And we are so excited to announce our new presenting sponsor, Elf Woo-hoo. Cosmetics. We are super, super excited about this. Um, you know, last time we were in L.A., which was a couple months back, we did get to visit the Elf office and it was so much fun. And we left with a ton of goodies that we were really excited about that we've been using all summer and just the hopes that we would get to work with elf and now we are so we are super excited about this new presenting sponsor elf cosmetics yeah this is one of my favorite sponsorships we've ever had i think elf is amazing everybody knows elf everybody's used elf Mm -hmm. which is so fun because it's something that i think we used as kids yeah not kids but you know teens yeah when you're venturing into when makeup you're, right when you're like work you're you're jumping into makeup mm. ooh like you love it and now everything is just so great all their mm. products are amazing um between makeup skin like they have so many great things i know everybody sees everything on tiktok all everybody loves it they're always praising it and rightfully so right because then you actually try it out and it's so Everything's so great, affordable, yeah, which is like so really nice. High quality, good yeah. products, a trustworthy brand. We all trust Elf, but also affordable yeah, products. Amazing we price. Got to try a whole bunch of new products, like I said, a couple Vegan months and ago. Cruelty free. Yes, that we've been using all summer. I got the uh Elf Halo. Mm-hmm. Halo Glow. And it's looking fabulous. Go in the Halo Glow liquid filter. I have that on right now wearing shade five in my tan mm. in my tan summer moments yeah, summer glow um summer glow it's so great the elf primer i think is also one of the go-to staple. staples that thing holds your makeup in place and a primer is important i feel like yeah. that goes untalked about that like yeah a really good primer goes a long way if you're putting your makeup on the morning you're wearing it all day maybe you want to go into the evening with it the elf primer is perfect for that the brow there, lift I also was, i use this morning is that what you're talking well, about? Well, I was say? about to say, like, I'm a huge brow lamination girl. And mm-hmm. so I really like their brow laminating, their brush, all of that gives you like that soapy laminated brow that I'm really, really into. And that's a great product to use, like, before you do your makeup or if you want to go for like that clean look mm-hmm. where you're going to do like the no makeup makeup look. I love a brushed up, like, soapy brow, and their products are great for that. Yeah. They also have this great uh, lip hydration mm. quote unquote mask that you could use i use it at night love and the lip liners i'm a lip liner girl yeah, as you well are. eyebrows and lips are yeah. my avenue i love a good brownish lip liner and as soon as we walked into their office and they were like we got all these lip liners that's immediately where i went and i took all of their brown lip liners yeah. i've been using them and i love them so much eyes lips face they got it all you Mm -hmm. know they can do really anything it's so great their products are amazing we love them and also stay tuned because we do have some exciting things down the line we have an exciting announcement coming up with elf you don't want to miss that that'll be in you know the next few weeks which is going to be really fun so stay tuned for that and you can learn more at elfcosmetics.com elf you all know it elfcosmetics.com you can also go to the elf cosmetics app which is great um, going through everything on your phone. Yeah. So and if you're pumped about Elf. And if you pick up products, don't be afraid to tag us on Instagram. You could tag Chicks in the Office. You can tag us personally, especially tag Elf Cosmetics on Instagram. And their TikTok is Elf Yeah, which is very fun. So we're very excited. So, so thank fun. you, Elf. And thank you guys for listening because then we get to do cool things like this with yep. Elf. Um, let's get into the rest of the show. I am running on zero hours of sleep. Maybe a half hour to an hour. But to me, that's zero. That's not good. That's I'm about to see. You know, I, would you like me to wait? Is it passing? It's one of those that's like now it's stuck like stuck in your stuck. nose. It'll come. It'll come. It'll pop. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll pop come out. Right there go. When you're least um, expecting it. I would argue that getting one or two hours of sleep sometimes is worse than just staying awake. Right, if you just you know, stay awake. Just being awake, and and pulling just, an all-nighter. Right, you pull an all-nighter and you just get through it, it's fine. Yeah. When you get that like one hour, so I've talked about this before, but like every, I would say three months, 
every two to three months. I've talked about I have endometriosis. I'm pretty sure this is what this has to do with. Yeah. That I get this like flare up. Yeah. Where the pain comes at the same exact time. Like yeah. 2, 3 p.m. And it lasts until 8 in the morning the next day. It is the same exact yeah. time frame every single time it comes. And it, like I said, it happens every, I would say more towards three months. Yeah. Really depending and I've, you know, gone to the doctor for it a bunch of times and there's nothing yeah. else there. Like you, I've done right, a ton of tests, like there's no, um, what was I going to ask you? Have you checked that? It doesn't have to be like, remember the last time you had to, the surgery you had, you had to get it like clear. Yeah. Yeah. Cleared no, out. That's is no, I've talked terrible to them, way of yeah. me phrasing I, that. I've but, talked to my gynecologist about it. Like, yeah, no, they're that, like, no, that's not it. No, it's just um, par for the course here. Right. And I used to because this has been happening for years now. yeah it has um and for I'm, as long as i've known you right and it happens and i and i gear up for it like i fucking know as soon as this pain hits me at 2 3 p.m because it's the same time every time i'm like mm, i'm in for an all-nighter it's about to happen and you know sometimes it won't like i, I said every three months it'll be like anywhere between two and five months it'll, yeah it'll come about um and i've used to go to the hospital for it because I used to be like, this is happening. Like, and I would just, in the middle of the night, I would go to the hospital yeah. and they would tell me the same thing every time. And I learned my lesson. I was like, all right, I'm done going to the hospital for this because there's every time I go, they're like, mm, no, par for yeah. course. So last night was just one of those nights where uh, we were home yesterday and it hit me about 2, 3 p.m. I was like, oh my God, come on. Like I was cleaning, you know, I was getting shit done and I just knew it when it hit me. I was like, yeah. oh, for the love of God, I know I'm not going oh. to sleep tonight. And that is exactly yeah, that what is happened. just the worst. And I was up, you know, I fell asleep for whatever, woke up at 2 a.m. and was just up all night night Ugh. i was like meditating i was deep breathing like because there's really nothing you can do i've i've taken everything in the book pepto yeah. advil mydol like all things that could like help some what help your stomach nothing so i don't want to hear any diagnosis because i've been dealing with this for years and i yeah, think it just yeah, has I to do with I, the yeah, situation yeah, yeah. and my god it makes me laugh at this point. Like I like I'm, I'm I'm up in the middle of the night, sitting on the edge of the bed, like laughing to myself. Like it's just here, here, here I am. I know this ain't going away yeah. until eight a.m. And then eight a.m. strikes, I feel better. It's the weirdest thing. It's like the same time frame. It's so bizarre. It really is crazy. Remember when you almost got your gallbladder? Removed? Yeah, that was like so like attention seeking of me. Like. <laughs> Well, they did tell was me. Was it though? Like, no, was it though? I really don't think. I don't it was. think it was. But like, they were like, "Yeah, you, ha you, you should get it removed." But then all of like that stomach, st those stomach issues went away. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I had other stomach issues that were more like. Um, well, it came way more frequently. It came way more Used frequently. To. Like, yeah. this pain, I'm, I'm just like ninety nine percent sure it just it's has just, to do with it, the fact endometriosis with, yeah. symptoms. Um, symptom. But those stomach aches and stuff, like in a different spot, completely went away. It was yeah. more of like a like, like when people talk about when they have like IBS, or yeah, like yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Like yeah, yeah, it, it seemed yeah. like that was more yeah. like you know like like yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That doesn't really happen to me anymore. So I don't deal with those stomach aches that were like yeah. causing me to like get my gallbladder removed. So I kind of like wrote that off because after talking to other people and other doctor, they were like getting your gallbladder removed could actually end up in a worse situation right 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 like right, right with the amount of like sludge you have they were like it's not you can get it removed but also getting yeah. removed might make it worse for you and it's always good to get multiple opinions too especially when it comes to like literally taking something right. out of your body <laughs> yeah so that's actually been like fine for yeah. the, the past two years now like yeah. i don't have those stomach problems anymore i just have this one that yeah. has to do with something that i just have like i know i know the reasoning 
But damn, it sucks. Every like I like I said, I just start laughing because I'm like, nothing. I talk. I was on the phone with my parents this morning, and I was like, you know that pain I get every couple months. They're like, yep. I was like, happened last night. They're like, damn, that sucks. Yeah, it's just the same thing every time. I mean, so. I know when we w- when we wake up to that text from you, I'm like, oh no, it, it's a, uh, it's happened. Right, and like you know we when really I start say, timing it, let's yeah, see, like, when it comes, up well, you know months. the pain. No, like, I know when exactly. I say, what you're guys, you about. know that pain, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. yep, I yep. know exactly what you're talking about. I'm like, yep. it happened last. Last night, I almost texted you guys in the middle of the night last in the middle night, of the night because sometimes I'm like, they'll believe me more if I text them in the middle of the night when I'm awake. I sometimes um, like, <laughs> I completely understand that, but I am also super aware and very conscious of the fact that you have endometriosis <laughs> like it's like sometimes and we've talked about this many times we don't right. have to rehash it if, uh, on this show again because we have done it before yeah. where you've been like nervous that you have to prove to us yeah that you really don't feel well and i'm like you don't have to prove to us that you don't feel right. well like you have something yeah. that m- women Me- suffer from that mm-hmm. is now more publicly being spoken about but it is debilitating yeah like yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I appreciate that you understand it. No, I, I would. Because sometimes crazy. when you try to explain it to people, they're like, yes. what do you mean? You're, you have a stomach ache? No, <laughs> like, I, yes. Like, no. no, like actually like no. is the worst pain. But yeah, it's all right. I just, I didn't really, I didn't sleep. And so yeah. now we're here and we're chatting and we're going to get through the day and yeah. it's going to be fantastic. You know what I started doing? Um, because we're now like wedding vibe is approaching not approaching but we're planning weddings Mm -hmm. and i've got a lot of things figured out we have openly said that i am getting married before you are getting married Mm -hmm. and what i started doing this week was like the bridesmaids shit and i'm just it is crazy it really what an industry man what an industry Mm -hmm. and until you're doing it you don't really realize, and I know people talk about, oh, like the bachelorette parties, like everything's so extravagant. People are spending so much money on their friends and all these things, which 100% valid that mm-hmm. is happening. But it's been very funny seeing the difference. Like Joe asking his groomsmen has been, hey, I really want you to be in my wedding party. Like you're my good friend. I love you. Will will you do it? And they're Isn't like, that yay! Little baskets for them. It's amazing. Yeah. Like maybe there's a gift involved, but yeah, it's yeah. like there's you know now I feel like groomsmen gifts is becoming right. more of a thing. But I'm fucking sitting on my computer. I'm like putting these goddamn boxes together. Yeah. I'm like, God, this is really something we. And then I feel like there's an expectation because I'm like, well, I can't not do it. What if like it's something that everybody does? I don't want my you bridesmaids to feel left out. You don't have to. I, too late. I already yeah, you're, did. You're already doing <laughs> too it. Too late. The things have been purchased. Yeah. You know? It's nice and thing to do. It is, it is very it is very nice, but man, that adds up fast. It does. It really it's does. It's an expensive business. Yeah. And I'm not, I, I've got a, I got a lot of, got a lot of bridesmaids, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I'm excited about. Wasn't fully my choice. And now I know you can have uneven numbers. That's yeah. all something that people do and it's very acceptable and all those things. I personally want it to be an even number. I agree with that. Um, I At this point, there's so goddamn many. I don't know if they'll, they'll stand up next to us mm-hmm. because there's, they, they're, there's just a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but Joe's blessed with like a lot of really good friends and he was like, hey, this is kind of the number that I want. I was like, all right. You're like, all right. Uh, uh, I got I got a, a lot of my friends are going to step up to the plate. <laughs> yeah, like, mm, let me pick one. Uh, right. We like, used to be close to oh college. Oh my God. I was like, <laughs> ah, I got the, the whole group chat's coming to the way, you know, like yeah. it was just funny. So now putting it all together, I'm like, wow, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And I know other people are planning weddings right now and we're like deep in wedding season fall September, October is like so busy, but doing all that has been kind of crazy. I know everybody feels it when they're planning and budgeting and doing all those things. And that was just like a crazy, like I was just watching Joe just on a whim, you know, night out being like, hey, you want to be, 
hey man, love you. Want to be in my wedding party? And they're like, yeah. They hug it out. Yeah. It's a great moment. Like maybe he'll send them like a cigar. Yeah, maybe, or something. exactly. You get like a nice a flask, something, something sent in the mail. Yeah. For the the ladies, it's just tough out there. Like I'm like, you gotta like host a party, right? Exactly. I'm like now either what do I do? I send them to everyone? Right. Do I host a dinner? That's kind of fun. If you do just, I like, to, send it in the mail? I know. Well, some people I'm gonna have to send because they mm-hmm. don't live in New York. Right. Um. But. Like having a dinner with everybody. Like that would be nice fine. because I don't want you giving it to me in this studio. No, no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. I actually, How do you know you're getting a bu- No, I'm kidding. You told me. <laughs> first of all, you told me who I was walking down with. No, no, yeah, you and know. I don't worry, guys. Home, she is in the wedding. And party. I went home and cried because <laughs> I thought it was so sweet. Yeah, it's nice. We have them all lined up. Because of who you're walking down yeah, with? Yeah, like I thought it was incredibly sweet yeah. and it actually made me I went home that day yeah. and I cried to myself. You're an, you're an important person in this journey. And I've been joking a lot with Gia too because obviously she's my maid of honor, but like I haven't made a big deal. <laughs> I swear to God, I went like, you told me I acted cool about it and I went home and I cried to myself. <laughs> You, that's an element you did not share until I did until right now. I was yeah. keeping that to myself, but it just felt well, appropriate to share. You know, you do feel like a part of my family. I so know that's why I. It was like so, and then yeah. so when we were, when I was doing our lineup, I was like, I gotta put Fran with someone good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't put her with you know like right, right, right. You know, just, one of Matt's and, friends. I don't yeah, know. right. Like I just can't put her with one a random friend. Like yeah. she's gonna be walking down with. A family member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's that's that's the way it goes. I we, I do f- feel like you are in my family, literally. Oh my so I actually texted you this weekend, and I said, "Can I join?" Yeah, the <laughs> there's, Mariana you're sisters. in already, basically. <laughs> you're basically in already, um, and that's been fun to do and like go through that process. But no, yeah, I have to get something nice for G. I think. Yeah, that's you know maid of honor. You yeah. gotta like. I got her a separate, separate box. Yeah, like the maid <laughs> of honor like just her gets gifts, like her gift is different. Right, you just get something else. like a little bit more special. Yeah, than exactly. The rest of them. Exactly. Like her dress is a little bit different than the rest of the dresses. No, definitely. She's uh, believe me, she's already very particular on on uh, what sh- what she wants her dress to look like, mm. which is fair. Yeah. I'll let her make maid that. Of honor. I'll let her make that decision. Makes sense. And it doesn't have to be. I'm try- I'm in between deciding like if I just want to give everybody like hey do what you fucking want you know like just give them a color yeah and just and just whatever dress yeah I like when people do that yeah because then it's like a like a little different but the same color yeah. scheme and the colors that we have I think it's limiting for everyone to like be in the same color and mm. different like people do the same color different styles that kind of thing but also if everybody isn't standing up next to us if we just do like our maid of honor or best man like everyone doesn't have to be coordinated in the same exact thing i think it's fun you just do what you want to do you know what i mean yeah exactly it's fun going through all these things it is fun and i also think it's fun to like you don't have to it's nice to keep tradition but you also don't have to do everything yeah. that everyone's doing all the time. Yep. Like you really can cater it to your own thing. Yeah. Um, it's just making me laugh because <laughs> when we booked our venue, we went to go see the place four times and the guy who's great. Yeah. Who like runs the venue gave the same exact speech and joke to every single person, every brought. single person we brought to see it. Um, <laughs> And so by the fourth, I was like, Here like I was like finishing his sentences and something he kept repeating was like, this generation is just like, they're so customizable. They just want to make mm. everything their own. Like, that's why this place is great. They just want to make everything their own, their own. And then like, of course, all of our parents had the same takeaway. Like, we fucking get it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this generation is so special. <laughs> I was like, it is true though. Like, yeah. you know, everyone has their own ideas and, and yeah. takes and and what they want to do so it totally is, it is very fun yeah um but i have some time you do i've got basically every all the big things figured out i have a couple spots uh couple vendor things left to figure but mm. figure out but like a majority of it is done 
just like not done yeah but right. booked yeah exactly you know so it's like that those the big things right which is nice i didn't really mean to deep dive into wedding stuff well but. no here's the thing if i don't change this chop topic i'll be asking more questions yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Get more yeah, details yeah, out there yeah. and i know that no i really gotta be kept yeah for sure we got some other big news oh we do have big news we do oh my gosh we got so distracted we are going back on tour yeah big exciting news humble fans part two now this time around we are not able to do as many stops as we would like so please forgive us when you start yelling at us and saying you know Repeat why cities. didn't you come here why didn't you come there Brazil. trust me guys yeah. we are working on it um other things just get in the way and then sometimes we can't do exactly what we want to do but for right now we were able to book four shows we are going to be coming to Philly once again because we feel like Philly deserves another shot at having a live show. The first time we did it, it was rowdy, it was fun, but it was at a bar and we yeah. want to do it the right way. That is October 12th at the Fillmore. We are doing Chicago round two. That was one of our favorite cities that we went to. We thought that one was so much fun. One of, the, one of our best shows, hands down. And that will be November 10th. And then... Charlotte. Charlotte, November 2nd. Right. Please, madame. New York. Where's our last show? December 6th. Yes. Um, that will be at Town Hall. Our holiday show. That will be our holiday spectacular. That is in December. And we're so excited for that one. Obviously, we love doing New York, hometown. It's always the biggest of the bunch that yeah. we usually do. So that'll be a ton of fun. Yeah. I'm really, really excited about these shows. I think the cities we're going to, they love us. We love them. You know, we want to do more cities. Atlanta, we're looking at you. Trust me. We are. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm super excited. Honestly, I'm, I'm excited for Philly and, and Chicago. They're great crowds. Um, I'm really excited for Charlotte. I think from the second we started doing live shows, we've gotten so many people suggesting Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And there's a big, you know, young yo pro there's a big young professional squad in in charlotte and there's a lot of great colleges around the area like things like, i think it's just going to be a great right. fun show and we floated charleston um we were between charleston and charlotte we unfortunately couldn't do both this yeah. time around and we ultimately went with charlotte so i'm sorry to the people of charleston but trust me we are going to hit maybe these you other can make the trip to charlotte yeah, I maybe know you can you know um we are going to super hit, close but yeah we're going to hit these other cities but for right now yeah. these are the cities that we are doing and we are so so excited the live shows are so much fun to us we really love getting on stage we love meeting you guys the meet and greet before the show gets us pumped up because we get to meet you guys and get a feel for the crowd and then when yeah. we're on stage the energy is just it's so different than you know when we sit in here and we do the podcast we do it three times a week and you know it kind of goes into the abyss for us we there's no audience we're just talking yeah. each other but when we get on stage you get a whole different re and friend yeah i mean well, totally you get the same re and friend but leveled up yeah well, normally we've had a few drinks, yes. which we don't have every day when we're <laughs> at work in the no, office. No, we don't know? have them at one o'clock so in the afternoon. So that makes everything a little bit more fun. Right. So you get us a couple shots deep. Yeah. You get us having a good time. And I think that majority of the people that come to our live shows always say that they have a blast. Yeah. And I will stand by that. I think they are so, so much fun. So make sure you guys look out for those tickets. Um, it's on Tuesday. Tuesday. On tickets Tuesday. go on sale. Tickets yeah. go on sale on Tuesday. So look out for those. I'm thinking they're going to sell out quick. So let's hope so. Let's hope. So be on top of that. And we're so excited to see you guys again. Um, I'm wearing a sweater in a very adult fashion right now. You are. That I've been doing lately, like when I went to the airport last week, because I got shamed. Mary Sophia Ritchie of you. I didn't talk about this, but I got shamed um, when I was going and coming back from the Dominican Republic. Some of. The girls were like, that's how you show up to the airport? And I was like, yep. Yeah. And they were like, you... Like, I mean, I was what? I was wearing a very baggy sweatshirt and like oh. a very baggy sweatpants. And they were like, that's... Like, they were like... one of the, They were joking. That's the best way to show up to the airport. That's usually how I show up to the airport. Mom. They were joking. But I was like, you know what? Why not throw on a nice, comfortable pair of trousers if I'm only going on a quick flight yeah. to Nashville? Hour and a half flight. Why don't I throw on a couple pair of trousers and a cardigan and, and head out on there and look like I'm going on a business trip? I don't know how often I'll do that, Yeah, but it felt right in the moment, and now my sweater is tied around my neck once again because I'm cold. 
I know that's adult. really the element of it being absolutely it's 95 degrees outside but it's chilly in the right. office. People probably watch us and they're like, why are they always in sweaters and stuff? It's yeah. like our legs are covered with our sw- right. <laughs> sweatshirts because it's freezing because in it's here. absolutely frigid in the studio yeah. and then so, so hot outside. It's insanely So, you know, you outside. walk in with a tank top, whatever, and then you come in here and you're freezing. Yeah. So that's what that's about. Uh, but let's get into the topics for today's show. And of course, we have the weekly watch report. We're going to be talking about Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas official divorce news and some details coming out about that. Love Island confirms there will be a Love Island Games and a Love Island All-Stars. So we're getting both of those shows. There's rumors about Carl and Lindsay from Summer House. Why? they broke up um thing details having to do with their wedding extravagant rumors flying around there really is and nina ogdahl has officially uh sued filed a lawsuit and a restraining order against dylan danis because of everything he's been doing on twitter which has been absurd um i don't know how both nina and logan have not lost their minds and we have the weekly watch report so let's get into it starting off with the topics we talked a lot about wedding planning um you know, we're we're getting things together. Sure. Are. You know, Fran's making those bridesmaids boxes. Mm-hmm. There's invitations that need to be made. There are so many things on the list. The list actually feels like it's endless, but Zola can help you out with that. Whether you're getting married, um, it's not just about the big day. It's about all the days along the way leading up to it, and Zola is here for all of them. If you've been to a wedding recently, then you definitely know Zola, or if you're planning a wedding, then you also know Zola. You maybe even got one of their beautiful invites on your fridge right now, or you're planning on sending one out yourself. Whether you're planning a wedding or you suddenly realize what Zola is, it's where you'll find your venue and all your wedding vendors. It's where you'll create your free wedding website so guests can RSVP and buy you those amazing gifts. But there's so much more. There's a budget tracker, a tool to get all of your guest addresses, which is so important because there's so many guests that you don't want to miss. You want to make sure you have all the information you need about them and checklists to keep you focused. You can also turn to Team Z, Zola's free expert advisors to answer any questions you may have along the way or the Zola community full of other engaged communities couples who know what you're going through so start planning at zola.com that's z-o-l-a.com once again start planning at zola.com dun 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 sophie turner and joe jonas official divorce news tmz reported it of course tuesday night we recorded the podcast speculation about them getting divorced and you were saying how the joe bro hoes were like no 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 we need to respect them there's no way and then boom we get home after we record and tmz reports joe jonas filed for divorce in miami on tuesday morning it's official you know there's a lot of things coming out and uh, people are not taking it well the initial it's battle in the, street, it is. the internet streets right now it very it very much is the initial reports from tmz before it was official was that joe jonas was looking for lawyers to file divorce he you know he likes to stay at home and, and sophie turner loves to go out and party so all these clips resurfaced of them talking about how sophie loves to stay at home and joe jonas loves to drink and party then the divorce comes out official he files and you know, it, uh, mentioning custody battle and how he's been with the kids. And then another article comes out c- quickly after the divorce one saying that the thing that Joe Jonas saw on the ring camera this past weekend of what Sophie was saying or doing was the final nail in the coffin for him to know that his marriage was officially over, followed by pictures was, there of There was him. no date on when he saw no, the ring camera. Yeah, but it, like... I thought so, I, I think, think it was like a like recent thing recent, but who, like knows, the you weekend. Know, who knows when that could have um, been and then f- quickly after that Joe Jonas out to dinner in New York City with, or out to lunch in New York City with his two kids and the nanny and all these things in Joe Jonas's favor which has the internet up in arms because it's immediately painting Sophie Turner in an absentee mother right. bad light partier not taking care of her kids she has been you know, filming a show in London. So uh, people are getting upset. They're like, well, she has been working as well. Joe Jonas has been on tour every year. And the immediate slandering um, is never good because usually I think when a couple gets divorced, a lot of the times publicly celebrity couples when they get divorced, it's just like the couple's getting divorced. Take Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth, right? Yeah. When it was announced they got divorced, 
there was speculation as to why, but it was never coming from Miley's camp or Liam's camp. Like it was never like, you know, Miley loves to stay at home and Liam loves to go out, sources yeah, yeah, say, yeah, from yeah. Miley's camp. Like it was always just speculation. I may be wrong on that, but like it's just an example of usually the divorce is, is filed. It's said that there's a divorce happening and there's no camps of people outright right away being like this is right. why so now that's happening it has the internet and this is where i'm most interested in your take is it has the internet up in arms and now completely destroying joe jonas because they are mad that this is attacking sophie's character i would like your opinion on where you stand with this um it's tough and it's like very dramatic of me <laughs> to be like um, it, this is a lot for the for, <laughs> for the fans because he's going through a divorce, right? Like, right, you right. know, it's, like it's his it's, life, it's his yeah, life, yeah. and we're all we're all just commenting on it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the way I see it, and yeah, of course there is a a, a Joe Jonas bias for for me, right? Like. How, but I love both of them. Like I'm, right. you're, I'm such a big fan of both of them that it's hard when it turns into this conversation. The Jonas Brothers team, publicists, individually as a band, like they have always been so tight and have always painted them in a in a good light, right? Like so, this has been kind of interesting to see the spin on where this is going. Now, there was a TMZ article this morning that came out. Also, sources say that Joe rushed Sophie back out in public after she had her second baby. She she didn't want to be out. Like, she wanted to stay home more. He was pushing her to do things. And, like, so the narrative, like, the narrative just keeps shifting and that's what happens, right? There's their, TMZ's getting a shit ton of clicks. They're going to have sources. People are going to talk to people who know Joe. They're going to talk to no Joe, people who know Sophie. And it's going to- Air quotes. She's doing yeah, air I'm quotes. Air quote. I'm doing air quotes. If you're um, watching, yeah, you're Yeah, I, I tried to use my voice she's in air, air quotes. She's you know? air quoting. Um, that are going to spin this in a way in, in favor of each people. Sadly, I think when divorce, Hollywood divorces happen with children and they have children that's when things can get messier which is sad and that's how it happens in real life too I mean you've everybody like mm -hmm. friends you have friends whose parents got divorced or your parents are divorced and mm -hmm. when you're when it comes to kids that's when people can really butt heads because it's not just a split of like okay now we both go back to living our own lives like Sophie has said in the in the press in the last you know couple of years that she would really like to have her kids in England. She loved the way she was brought up. She loved the way. She, <coughs> there's the sneeze. <coughs> wow, it took a while to finally come out. Yep. <laughs> I felt that one coming. I said, "Let it come." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yep, you know, yep. you had to relax, and I was like, "Just let it come out." Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that she you know really loved her upbringing and would love to her children to have that. So I would love that. Yeah. So I'll, you know, that's, I'll move there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's really tough because, you know, she joked and at the time she joked like, oh, I'm trying to convince my husband, like blah, 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 like that kind of vibe. So now that they're splitting up, where do they want to have the kids? Is that going to be a contentious process? Joe and Sophie both put out statements, which was kind of interesting. It was just like blanket Instagram post amical breakup respect our private you know that kind of vibe mm -hmm. sophie's always been so private with her personal life with her children with unidentified second child like we don't even know the name of this second child that's you know they're extremely protective um which is why i can see like i'm not completely rose color glasses when it comes to joe because like the paparazzi pictures of him out with the nanny so lame with the kids i that like makes my stomach turn because those kids are never seen right those kids are never seen and they're never seen for a reason mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden they're like out at lunch and we right. see the kids because they're with joe to me that was so lame because um 
you're going through this very public divorce and yes you are on stage every night and you signed up for that and that is your livelihood and that's your career and people want to see you on stage I don't think you need to take your kids out into the public right now no where paparazzi is going to take photographs of them the day it is announced that you are getting divorced and there and it's a lot of conversation about your kids i think that that yeah, to that, me not like only that. like lame is a poor wor- choice of word to use but that's the word i'm going with that leaves a sour taste in my mouth because i'm like you don't need to prove that you're with your kids right no. now okay you're a father and okay you're with your kids right and, and now, i also feel like now, they would have had some kind of agreement right going into sophie's like hey i'm going to film this show it's in the uk we obviously have to figure out like how that works mm-hmm. but that would explain why right and it's not like joe gets a medal for taking care of their kids right that's what it's like you are a father yeah and you, i'm sure you guys decided in some capacity that the kids would stay in the right. u.s while sophie films a show right you, do you want a cookie for taking them out to lunch and being paparazzi the day that you got a divorce like we know you we know you're or we hope you're with your kids so i think that I part know. left a sour taste in my mouth no definitely. But when it comes to um just the back and forth he said she said i think that both parties can be in the wrong with some things. I'm sure there are things that Sophie has done that has made Joe Jonas file for divorce. But can I bet that Joe Jonas probably did some things too? Yes. Because I yeah. think when you, and I, I don't know, I, I am just speaking not from experience. So this is just assumption here. If this marriage ends in a divorce, I think that both parties and we were talking about this yesterday that it's not always so one-sided it's it's never that one-sided in any breakup unless you unless you are an absolute saint and you are with somebody who just knocked you off your feet you had no idea they were Mm -hmm. having an affair you found out like you you were like oh my god and and you were so oblivious to it and you were saint and you did nothing and all of a sudden they cheated on you and there was an affair like that's that's awful but that's one side right but this like back and forth of like tell us what was on the ring camera then no you know what i mean like when you vaguely say you know i heard something on the ring camera people are go are now going to wonder and And now i think he probably was also cheating right which i don't i don't know maybe i'm crazy i really don't think that that was Right, but you, I don't think that you, was an element involved I think here. We don't know that for sure. No, you know no, no. I mean? It's my it's my I, opinion. I think that's where people go so heavy on the internet, whether it's against Joe, against Sophie, for the other person. When you kind of just got to take yourself out of it and go, all right, these are two people that are getting divorced. We don't know any details about the situation. Could Joe Jonas be in the wrong? Yes. Could Sophie Turner be in the wrong? Yes. Both people could be in the wrong. We don't know any details. Are you paying too much for your wireless plan? Straight Talk just introduced the new Straight Talk multi-line plan where more lines mean more savings. Just $25 a line per month when you get four lines with unlimited data, talk, and text all on nationwide 5G. Plus no contracts, no hidden fees and no compromises. So once again, maybe take a look at what you're paying every month because I think that it's something that everybody's used to. They have their phone bill, they pay it. Maybe look at the way that you're paying it. Maybe question that number because if you're paying too much for your wireless plan, check out Straight Talk. Like I said, the new Straight Talk multi-line plan where more lines mean more savings for just $25 a line per month when you get four lines with unlimited data, talk, and text. And it's all on nationwide 5G. No contracts, no hidden fees, no compromises. That's the Straight Talk talking From Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart and walmart.com. I think the problem was that people are just... People always look uh, to blame one person, They too. look to blame one person, and they think that 
by Joe's camp of people putting out these statements that it is automatic blame on Sophie. Right. And which, by people the way, are like, coming to her defense. Of course which, it is everything very once, like the original, all the original tabloid stories, so it, it very seemed very pro-Joe. Um, so, you know, you jump to that assumption, like that's Joe's mm -hmm. team doing all that stuff. You, know, you don't really know 100%. You, every PR person on TikTok is saying that that's the case and they mm. and and I'm sure I'm sure it is like I said the Jones brothers have always been very protective of how they are perceived and I just like tabloids I also think love to take a spin and blow things up because it's gonna obviously get them views and clicks and whatnot and they are gonna grasp for any source any mm. story that can contribute to this like and and some of it is bad like in a gross way right like they there's been pictures of sophie turner at her rap party for her show mm -hmm. and she's you know having a good time she's having a drink like and they're like so absent mother take it like days Which before a divorce insane. like insane it's, it's a rap party she's enjoying yeah. herself she's having a good time she's allowed because to she's have, going through a breakup she has to right. fucking sit in her room and cry right like and it's because of the narrative that's been put out that oh she's a party or yeah. whatever she's allowed to go out and have a good time as a mom like yeah. she can do that as long as she's fulfilling her duties yeah. i guess as a, as a mom and but i will I, I will say that like i the, do love sophie turner a yeah, lot she's I've, always been 100%. very private but from what we've seen of her she's always been so funny and has always seemed like a good time and so I really yeah. do love Sophie Turner. So I hope that everything is all right with her because what right. they are and she's saying been very open about her right. mental health battles. And exactly. And so through. I hope that she's OK, because these statements, you know, can't be easy when you're getting divorced and your ex-husband is now painting or not him specifically, but maybe people he knows are painting some sort of picture, whether it's true or not. Some things don't need to be publicized, I think. You know, yeah, yeah. Because then it like taints the image of of the person, and so I think that this is a, a very sticky situation because totally. now people are saying, and it goes in the other direction too, where they're like, Joe Jonas definitely did something wrong, and so how do you feel about that as you know, loyal fan? It's like I don't know if you can one hundred percent say he definitely did something wrong i don't think you but can 100 percent definitely say anything we have no idea about either of them you yeah. can't definitely be like oh yeah she's a partier who knows yeah well because we she was seen at a rap party right or you know oh joe jonas definitely did something because he's the one filing and he's the one saying these things yeah maybe he actually feels a certain way maybe sophie is really just in england filming her show and yeah. it just is not working out for them and even like the home but buddy. do i want to know what's on that ring camera yes. yeah i know it's good that's <laughs> that's like a that is such a crazy thing and that's also opened up like a, a a privacy conversation but i don't know if you're listening in or watching in or so, you're 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 looking for something i think this may be a hot take but because people are like that's disgusting he was spying on her on the ring camera right i think when you're married yeah and you suspect something. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, and yeah. you suspect something, you're probably going to look at the right camera. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I agree with you. Because I think if, you know. Right, if it's like the ring camera for for your home. Right, your, it's your, your home, home ring you camera. You didn't plant a camera on her. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's at your home, your ring camera, you have access to. If you suspect something maybe going right. on with your partner, you're probably gonna now check look, the ring if camera. Joe installed a ring camera, and Sophie didn't know that there was a brand new ring camera right. there. Sure, that's, that's a, a different problem. conversation, but we that's don't, a huge problem. And we don't. And her and like the the going out conversation is interesting because obviously Joe, everyone sees Joe DJing and hosting these parties and doing these events and all these things, which definitely I think that they both like going out and and people were you know they reference the interview from 2020 so if he was like i'm a, I'm a homebody J joe definitely likes to go out more and i'm sure that that is tr that's true i mean you can also be going through like quite literally phases. anything when you're staying at home you could be going through phases and that was also like in covid so i don't yeah. you know it's just it's just an interesting conversation i just from what i've observed from being around 
like their shows and things and like the happiness begins tour we were like in different elements mm. it always felt like everybody was like oh joe and sophie love going out like they the, joe and sophie together are that couple they host events they they right. like to do things together and now that narrative has changed where it's like well he likes to go. no she likes to go out but so in my mind i'm like they both probably enjoy those things and now that's shifted in some way and it's being used as a mm. way to attack the other person like there were, were plenty of in- interviews of of them of the brothers being like, "Oh, Joe and Sophie have the best parties. They're yeah, the, they're, they're the partiers. They're, they're, they, they love host, going They out. love doing it." And Joe, um, like, if you were to put me and my fiance Joe <laughs> in one of those TikTok things where you're pouring at people mm-hmm. and you're like, "Who likes to do this more?" and like that's really, who likes to go out more, I'd be like Joe, like mm-hmm. I, you know, because that's true. But that doesn't mean I don't like to go out. Like right. I still, he just likes it more. So I don't know. It's just an interesting I also think spin people, that feels kind of unfair and also in no way should translate to her being a bad mom. Right. That's what's crazy to me. It's like, oh, that then she's a bad mom. No, that's that. Those two things don't equal exactly. each other. There are plenty of moms out there that go out and have a good time that are fantastic yeah. moms. I also think that people go through phases in life where sometimes you like to stay home. You yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes you're a homebody and you go through a phase where you're like, mm, I just don't really love going out. Maybe it lasts for a couple months. Maybe it lasts a year. Maybe yep. it's a couple of years. And then you enter a phase where you're like, fuck it, I love going out. I want to go out all the time. Like people go through phases in their life. And I I think what you said, like, unless there are actual stories of her, like, not being a great mom, then the narrative of her being a bad mom just because she likes to go out is crazy. And I think yeah. that's not what they should have led with. You know no. what I mean? Like, I think it should have just been like, here's a divorce. They, they haven't been getting along, yeah. which I think if you say a couple hasn't been getting along... And they're going through a divorce. I don't think irretrievably broken is the fra- right. is the phrase that like they use so, about that's their marriage. That's like somebody did something really bad. Irretrievably broken is a phrase that I don't think has ever like been used. That's like conscious uncoupling. Yeah, it's of- like e- like it, it's just feels so extreme. It's like this is so broken. Yeah. Somebody did something so bad that it can never be fixed, or there was multiple things that happened that were so bad it can't be fixed. But when you just say, "Oh, couples getting divorced," you know, they're just not in love anymore. They don't. They don't yeah. get. They're not compatible. Whatever. Then nobody is like aiming to point the fingers at one specific person. But in this case, because things came out immediately, it's like oh, this person's painted as a bad mom. This person's painted as maybe they cheated. This person's painted as a partier and they don't do that. So I just think, I feel bad for, I feel bad that they're going through this so publicly. I feel bad for Sophie Turner in the sense that I think she is very, very private person online. And, you know, she might be going through something or they were going through something together. And I don't think she deserves the direct you know yeah, attack no, of her no. character of being a mother and then i also think joe doesn't deserve people going automatically oh he broke up with taylor swift over the phone that means he's an awful right, right. Hus- husband so no, like, no, I, know, I know i think that I there's like so yeah, extremes to their extremes for was sure. it extremely lame for joe jonas to take his daughters out to lunch to be pa- paparazzi yeah i don't yes. like that very lame um yeah and and it's just it's just sad because if it continues like i I'm a, you you worry that this might not be a smooth custody mm-hmm. conversation, which you know I hope is not the case, because um, obviously that's very sad. Like is that it's there's there's two very small, two very small children involved, and I, I a lot of couples once again purely speculation, but I look at like Ariana Grande and and her husband, right? Like mm-hmm. Dalton, like they. COVID, she's home all the time. It worked. And now being back at work, doing her things, like it, it, it's it's time. When you lose that quality time that you were having, things can get strained. And I feel like Joe was maybe really reliant on Sophie being around. And they had two kids mm-hmm. close together. And now like back to working doing these things all super normal things that sophie 
should be doing and maybe it caused some kind of strain or they right. were di- they're they're in different places but she they're should be able to do that because he's going on tour every year 100 percent. it's like you're you can't 100%. expect to be able to go on tour every no, year that's and why Sophie's i'm saying like work. that could be yeah. a knock on that could be a knock on joe in a situation right. like this yeah. um it's, you know that's not that's not a good look mm. um and sometimes i feel like that kind of happens especially in this weird like immediate immediate clarification that the kids have been with joe like that from day for them to that's the first thing that came out right and it was like mm. and immediately everyone was like okay well sophie's been filming a show in england so somebody would, right, you're, some somebody has to take care of the kids yeah you're the and you're, you're the, the you're their father that's not a crazy thing right and like that's a different country and so i could see why the kids would end up with you and yeah. not her while she's filming the show yeah so I don't know. I'm sure yeah. I am sure we are going to get more details. Yesterday I said maybe we won't get more details. Now I am sure we're going to get more details unless they learn to maybe keep this hush hush. Tell us what was on the ring camera and maybe that'll clarify because you've now gone so they've gone too deep with it, right? right. Now they've left everything up to the imagination for people to make up a bunch of rumors where they might need to clarify because they've usually and I they would w- say keep things private, but they've gone past the point of privacy. Yeah. They they won't though. I don't know. It's some. It's very interesting because you can jump to like teams and people saying things, but tabloids also love like the tabloids run stories on Britney Spears every single day. Am I? Do I think? I mean, well, Sam. You know, Sam's team is a different thing. But am I? Are those always coming from one of them? Like it's it's a it's a juicy. Mm-hmm. person you get those stories um in this situation i definitely would have thought that this whole thing would have been kept way more private so i am very surprised by that yeah. and if that is was a joe's team publicist whatever vibe decision that they made uh maybe not the best yep i agree Moving on to another couple that... I also want to say, sorry, I've got 9 million thoughts about this. I could talk for three hours. I do think there's going to be, there's just going to be stories and pictures about everything because they're on tour right now. And, you know, there's a headline like Jonas Brothers hug it out Mm -hmm. on stage, like amidst divorce. Like they hug every night on stage. They're Mm -hmm. brothers. They're on tour, group hug. Yeah. Like that's not... Makes sense. Like... That's not a crazy thing. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it was a little extra for Joe, but those are not, that's not headline news right. to me. Maybe they gave him a little extra slap in the ass. Yeah. Like that's not, that's not right. headline news to me. Um, right. So that, that's, I, you know, like I said, the stories could potentially get more and more ridiculous because mm-hmm. that's sometimes what happens when the interest is there too. And so now everybody wants to know every detail and they're just going to keep digging and the rumors are going to keep flying. And yep, it's just, uh, it's sad that it got, uh, it's sad that it got messy like this because everyone really did love them as a couple. And now as it, as it ends, the public, I think also really wants to individually tear people down sometimes when things end. Mm -hmm. So... Everybody loves when the VMAs come around. It's always an exciting night on MTV. And you never want to miss out on music's most iconic night. With unbelievable live performances from your favorite artists like Anita, Doja Cat, Carol G, Lil Wayne, and so many more. Obviously, you want to tune in to the VMAs. And you can't miss Demi Lovato's six-year-in-the-making return to the VMA stage. Plus, this year's video vanguard, Shakira, will bring the house down with a career-spanning performance. Everybody loves a good Shakira performance. We all know that. And Diddy takes home this year's Global Icon Award. So it's going to be a star-studded cast. And the party does not stop there. You're going to want to know who takes home the Moon Person video of the year. It's going to be up to so many different artists, including Miley Cyrus, and Taylor Swift. So let's make sure that we are tuning into the MTV Video Music Awards live this Tuesday at 8, 7 central. Once again, MTV Video Music Awards are live this Tuesday at 8, 7 central on MTV. The VMAs are always so much fun. So make sure you tune into that. Moving on to another couple. 
um, Carl and Lindsay from Summer House. We know that their engagement has been broken. Carl ended it with Lindsay on camera. And now we did talk about this, but it has been confirmed that Carl called the producers or not completely confirmed, but this is what's going around, that Carl called the Summer House producers and let them know what was going to happen before he ended things with Lindsay. Now, they had this wedding in Mexico planned for November, and the date to cancel things with a refund was like right Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. he ended this engagement. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty suspicious because now people are saying partnerships, sponsorships, did they not cancel for that reason? I'm about to sneeze again, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I'm going to stuff it in. Uh, A lot of speculation as to why Carl, knowing about the date in which they would have to, you know, cancel everything and for guests to get their money. And now guests can't get their money back and they kind of have to eat that price that they paid because they can't get a refund. Yeah. And I think it was all in a matter of days. Yeah. This, I excuse myself for my sniffling. I'm very sorry. No, the it's um this this has felt super messy, right? And it's felt like that way this whole time. Um, the Bravo, the Bravo Instagram accounts and whatnot have run wild with rumors and different stories and whatnot. But what does seem to be the case is, like you said, production got a heads up that this was going to happen. Carl was going to do this. Nobody else knew rumor is that Carl had maybe been checked out but Lindsay really had no idea thought everything was going to go according to plan um now the like you said the idea of them waiting or like partnerships were done or things like that were happening not surprising at all because I know that we have heard that in the midst of planning their wedding, like that was something that they were really involved in doing. Making, you know, having partnerships, making money, like doing those things around wedding stuff. Maybe, like you said, maybe they had a, maybe they had a deal with the hotel in order for the hotel to make their money. It had to happen. Cancellation had to happen later to all the guests still have to pay. <laughs> Uh, this is crazy scenario. There's a billion rumors flying around. I don't know what there's validity to really anything. There's like cheating rumors. There's all these crazy things running around. Don't know what's actually going on. What does seem to be is the fact that Lindsay was devastated. I did see a account post the uh scene from Sex in the City. Did you see that? Yes. Where they were like, this is Mm -hmm. Carl, Lindsay, Danielle. And Danielle commented. You know, and Danielle commented like, just call me Charlotte basically is, you know, what she said. Mm -hmm. So her kind of, you know, saying that is like, oh, you know, confirming as much as you can that she was blindsided and they all are very upset with Carl, (laughs) obviously. I do feel bad for Lindsay. I do. I know that. I know Lindsay, you know, has her issues and has her fights with people. I just feel like no matter what, finding out that your engagement is coming to an end on camera, knowing producers found out first, people saying, oh, he did that to protect himself. And it just, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Like it just, something about it feels extremely wrong to me, Mm -hmm. no matter if you like Lindsay or not. I think that no wonder she would be heartbroken and you know Dumois posted that she can't even leave her apartment and friends are trying to get her out and it's like no shit I mean if you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with somebody your wedding is only a couple months away and you just had your bridal shower 
and everything's in, on the move and you just get told that like the person you envisioned your life with is just like ending things with you, I can imagine it would be very hard to leave your apartment. So yeah. no matter if you like Lindsay, you don't like Lindsay and you think she's nuts and you think she would have acted a certain way if Carl ended it on her with, with you know, producers not knowing first, like I, I just think it's fucked up because there are plenty of people in the world who end engagements and they end marriages with so-called quote unquote, you know, I don't know, people label Lindsay yeah, yeah. as crazy or whatever. And they do it and they're not on a reality show. And I think that's how you take care of that kind of business. At the end of the day, no matter which way you shake it, him going out of his way to do that on camera Right. Is devastating. It is. And if you, know, you, and like, if you uh, really no matter thought. what other stories come right. out. And if you really thought she was going to do something nuts to you by ending, you call somebody from her family, whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. her mom, like you call somebody, you have them there. Yeah. You do it like intervention style almost. Right. Like I think, you know, I don't know if that's the best way. I'm just, you know, shooting things out. I no, think just. I, yeah, yeah doing it on camera for the first time and letting producers of your show know about something so important in your life before you tell the person you're actually engaged to is is pretty fucked up. And so I feel for Lindsay and I am very curious about the details of that, obviously. And I, I think, you know, we're, it's going to be a while before we see anything with that because Summer House yeah. hasn't come out for a while yeah. and no statements from the, either of them, which I think is very telling. No. Um, no, everything's been like Lindsay's really struggling. She has her support system around her, but it's been really hard for her, which yeah. completely makes sense. Right. Uh, moving on, we this is quick, quick announcement. Love Island Games and Love Island All Stars are both happening. We'll take all the Love Island we can get when you bring in the old contestants and put yeah. them together. Obviously, we've always wanted a, um, an All Star season. Knowing that Maura will never be on one really unfortunate is devastating because we did interview her and she said she'll never go on one of those shows as a contestant as, as a contestant ever again, which is very unfortunate knowing that. But there are still other great contestants that I think we would all love to see again and then love island games i mean you loved winter games when it came to the bachelor <laughs> yeah and so throw love island in the mix it's interesting because obviously like the name is organized you you hear uh like the love island brand i should say itv entity all these things but love island games is peacock based and my j my jamma is hosting that so it's like the uk host is hosting love island games on peacock which will be bringing together cast members from us uk australia i think like a bunch of different places sleep number smart beds learn how you sleep and provide personalized insights to help you learn to sleep better science shows quality sleep helps improve your mental emotional, physical, and relationship health. So if you're waking up tired, here are some tips to help you sleep better. Maybe you had a tough workout. The Sleep Number Smart Bed can help you get the quality sleep you need to recover faster and perform at your best. By contouring to your neck, shoulders, back, and hips, the Sleep Number Smart Bed provides support and even weight distribution for more comfortable sleep. Maybe you've been sleeping hot this summer. It's been a hot summer. Sleep experts recommend keeping your bedroom temp 65 to 68 degrees for comfortable sleep. An air conditioner or fan plus temperature balancing sleep number smart beds and bedding can help keep you cool so you both sleep just right. Maybe you disagree on comfort. Your partner has a different choice. They like a different type of bed. Eight out of 10 couples prefer a different mattress firmness than their partner. Sleep number smart beds let you choose your ideal firmness on each side and then automatically should respond to your individual movements throughout the night to keep you both sleeping comfortably. So sleep next level, unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now don't miss Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year where all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number limited edition smart bed plus special financing for a limited time only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com. See stores for details. Love Island All-Stars is different in the fact that I think that is like UK based. That's coming in 2024. That's the idea that they have had to bring back UK contestants to do an all-star season. Um, 
and that's like that's a different entity than Love Island Games, which was a little confusing because the, there were so many rumors about Love Island All Stars, and then all of a sudden Peacock started running ads for Love Island Games, and I was like, wait, is this is this Love Island All Stars or is this like something different? So now that that is that is something different, but Love Island All Stars is going to come out in 2024. Do it in South Africa. Um, the spinoff will see participants from previous seasons venture back into the South African villa for a second chance at finding love. I think that they were kind of struggling with the winter Love Island ratings. Just wasn't as high as summer. It makes sense. It's just like people, I think, people I think relate summer and Love Island now synonymously. <laughs> and winter was maybe just a little bit of a tougher sell. So I think now it's like, oh, they'll do Love Island All-Stars that'll get people the attention will obviously be there because people are really want to uh see that come through uh quote was after 10 ratings but after 10 ratings busting seasons of love island itv2 we're delighted to be able to celebrate a decade of the number one dating show on tv with the first ever series of island all-stars set in south africa um iconic uk islanders back at it again uh, which I think is great. So both are like, both are very interesting, of course, different in the style. I feel like Love Island Ga Love Island Games will have more of like a Bachelor Winter Games feel, challenges, things of the such, where it's not just like the sh same exact show with different people. Love Island All-Stars sounds like just a Love Island season with all people that we know. Mm-hmm. But both very intriguing. And I think Love Island Games is supposed to start in like November. Yeah. I think so it's very close. But we have, I don't think we have any casting on that. Like I don't think we know who's doing it yet. Mm -hmm. I think either way people are going to watch it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm interested to see what you like. It's funny because it'll be funny to see like what UK people get to go on what show. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I, the UK people who end up on Love Island Games on Peacock may not have gotten the call for Love Island All Stars, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> they got the boot to They're like, to the we'll games. send you to Love Island Games yep. with uh with the US <laughs> cast. But Love Island All Stars is gonna be yeah. awesome. I look, I'll watch anything that they that they do. Um, you know me, like I watch I watch all of Australia. I watch mm -hmm. them all. There hasn't really been one in the last few years that I've, made, that <laughs> <Yeah>. I've missed. <laughs> so I will be tuning in mm -hmm. for all of them. Last topic we talked about this briefly last week, I think, that Dylan Dennis was continuously posting pictures of Nina Ogdahl. She, he was posting, you know, naked pictures of her that were public. Um, she posed in pictures of her and her ex-boyfriends, videos of her from Snapchat. It has been relentless. It has been every single day. He does not stop. He calls her names. He yeah. is actually so fucking annoying. Um, but... Nina has filed a lawsuit and a restraining order and she's looking for prison time for Dylan. Now, I am unsure as to what the lawsuit can be. Right. Because what he has shared is our public photos. Um, but I'm thinking maybe defamation. I am not 100% clear on what she can be suing for. Yeah. Um, yes, because there's no actual papers to like quote I believe is like you know this came it says that she's reportedly suing so that sounds like obviously something she would look into that's kind of the conversation it's it's where what does that look like if that really does happen um for all of his for all of his trolling you could say the the Daily Mail wrote the shocking personal attacks led Nina to file a lawsuit against Dennis on Wednesday, claiming her fiance's opponent posted despicable things about her more than 250 times since the bout was announced. She claims in the suit that she has suffered, or maybe it is, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little interested in like where that is because it's not being reported everywhere. But if they're writing she claims in the suit, she's she filed a suit. Right. Like so she claims in the suit that she has suffered humiliation, emotional distress and reputational harm. Um, Nina alleged that on that in August 8th post shared by Dennis in particular violated federal and state law. The post she claims featured in a sexually explicit image of her from a romantic encounter she had with someone more than 10 years ago. 
Um, Dan has posted the photograph entirely uncensored from his Twitter account without plaintiff's consent. Agdal wrote in the suit later that day, Dennis reposted the explicit photograph in order to maximize the number of views it would receive. She claims that Dennis agreed to remove the post only after the organizers of his fight with Paul miss its boxing threatened to cancel the showdown unless he deleted it. Dennis responded to the suit via X informing his followers that he could not offer much comment at this time. Okay, 100%, obviously. As I, but Nina Ogdal has filed a massive lawsuit against me, he wrote. She filed a restraining order against me and is seeking prison time, so the fight is in jeopardy if I'm in jail. This is actually wild, but I won't stop. Fuck the system. Come get me. Logan Paul is a dead man walking. I will provide more details when I can, but because it's a federal case, I can't at this time. P.S. Fuck that. Ho. Oh. Nina Ogdal will be called Karen Ogdal till further notice. It's just nonstop. I, I don't know. I honestly really do not know how they are not going insane. Hate him. It's just makes my skin crawl. What a terrible human being. You know. Yeah. Like that's just he's a he's, just stop or like give up or be like no that was you wh- know where cro- I crossed he, the line. Is he finding? any time to train is this like providing enjoyment for him i guess so because the thing is is he's getting so many likes it's like this weird internet thing where like all of the trolls on the internet think this is funny to like go after a girl like this so like haha oh my god dylan down is so funny meanwhile it's really not funny it's just like immature but to him he's like oh so many people are liking and retweeting my tweets so i guess this is like the most attention he's gotten in a long time and and that's why he's going with it but he's a bizarre he's a bizarre human it really is wild it's just it's truly like if it it has I crossed even, the like, line I, of fight pro and we talked about this it crossed yeah. the line of fight promo into like creepy personal it's vendetta it's so bizarre it genuinely i can't even look at it anymore like, because it's, it's like it, it's less trying to ruin logan's life and like trying to ruin her life right, which is just, really sick it's so it's so strange and just it's like shut up all right mm-hmm. i i actually do not know how logan and nina are both like not going insane and maybe they are going insane yeah, privately it, yeah but I just it's one of those things where he's like uncontrollable at yeah. this point it's no it's, not, un- it's, it's unhinged it's he's on unhin- it's not even funny it's no like, it's not just stop yeah what like all right we get it she had ex-boyfriends like she's a yeah. fucking supermodel yeah. are you jealous that you can't date a supermodel because that's what this seems to be yeah it's bizarre it's it's, really it's bizarre. just incredibly annoying yeah, I and i, like I, I even just like Ugh. viewing it is annoying and grinds our gears i can't imagine actually being nina in this position no i feel like you'd just be like sick to your stomach at all times it's like every and you're just day, afraid every day of what more he could do right you're just like you have to spend your time thinking like what else is he gonna tweet and also yeah. he has no life if this is what he is doing 24 yeah, yeah. 7 no life yeah totally agreed all right that wraps up the topics All right, we're going to jump into the weekly watch report. Uh, Let's chat about Coors Light, our favorite light beer. It's amazing. It's delicious. It's made to chill. We got our ice cold Coors Lights in right next to us. Blue Mountains, cold. Feels nice, honestly. Really cold. You know, a little, get a little cold, cold vibe. Get your hands on that. Nice and chilly. Um, It's the best way to drink a Coors Light. And everyone is back to school. People get back into the swing of things at work. People get sad about the summer being over. And maybe you're dreaming about the day that you'll get to retire and enjoy all the freedoms that come with it. But who says we have to wait decades before we get to kick back and chill out, take advantage of that free will, and spend the summer chilling like a retiree and pair those moments with Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. You can pairs perfectly with that retired state of mind. Crack one open. You know, my nails are very long right now, but I can get... Oh, there we go. Ooh, that was a nice... That was a nice pop. Hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, It's delicious. Great. We love Coors Light. Perfect... Pairs perfectly with all your plans or, you know, no plans, no judgment here, whatever you got going on. Pair it with a nice cold Coors Light. You could be going out on the weekend with friends, headed to the bar. You can enjoy Coors Light at the bar. You could maybe be watching sports, you know, big weekend coming up. Football is back. Maybe you just stock your fridge with Coors Light ready to go. 
So make sure you are chilling like you are retired with Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash chicks. And always celebrate responsibly from Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. What'd you watch this week? Okay, first off, I watched You're So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah. I loved it so much. So cute. I thought it was so cute. I cried. I laughed. I had a great time watching it. I am going to give that a... B plus. Love. I'm going to give it a B plus. That's what I, I thought it was really cute. I thought it was really cute. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was hilarious. I love that Adam Sandler did this with his daughters. I also love the fact that he puts his wife in his movies, but not as his wife. Yeah. That Wait, always cracks me up. his daughter? They're both They're his both daughters. daughters. They're both his daughters? Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Both of his daughters in the movie are his daughters. <laughs> That's been the whole conversation around the movie. Yeah. I didn't see any conversation. It's, I just watched the movie. It's their whole, it's their whole family. Yeah. And the friends, the friends, Lydia's mom, mom Lydia's is mom is Adam, Adam Sandler's Sandler wife, wife in real life. Mm. Yes. Not in Dina Menzel. Right. So I loved it. I thought but it was really But I'm going to give it a B plus because giving it, I don't know, like it was a very cute movie. I'm just I know. And plus. also like the people being like, oh, he, he he shouldn't put his daughters in his movies. They were great. They were great. Why? And also, you know, if Adam Sandler, like you know how many silly move not you know silly is quote unquote the wrong word but how many movies adam sandler makes and can make he wants to put his daughters in a movie he's gonna do it if i'm adam sandler i'm putting my daughters in my, movie, in my movie there's no stop right them. and also like they're funny yeah and they were great i thought actresses. they were really good she was really so good the, she was really good stacy was, really was so good, good. Yep. um so that was a b plus for me i very much enjoyed it that it was really cute we'll probably watch again i thought it was like perfect for yeah. us i would um i'll get I would agree. I give the same grade. Yep. I think we all B pluses all around. I was yeah. Team Lydia the whole movie. Duh. Until the end. But yeah, but you know, end, pulls like, but you know what? Pulls your heartstrings though for and, Stacey. And every for Stacey. Yeah, and every, you know, I think every seventh grade girl has has lived through that, where you make some poor decisions with right. your friends, and you regret them. Yeah. It's a learning. Learning, learning experience. Right. You're mad. Can't be perfect all the time. You're no. certainly not perfect in middle school. No, you're mad at Stacy, but at the same time, you're rooting for her to make a comeback. Totally. And I actually really liked her as a character. Yeah. And she looks a lot like Charlie D'Amelio. She does. As I was watching, I thought that she definitely does. I also love the casting. Like the boy that they all had a crush on was just such a perfect, <laughs> annoying seventh he was grade so boy annoying. that they were like that everybody loves. Yeah. But it's like, why? I cracked up. When love it. He was like, oh, that's low key a good idea. That sounds like <laughs> my grandma. And he was like, no, I know. That was funny. I know. And he's just, um, they're just like, bet. Right. Like, just I like, bet like <laughs> Adam Sandler writing this movie is like. Some people watching it think they don't realize the irony in he it like the people that. doing the tiktok dances and everything like no, it's I, it funny very funny and it did like as obviously girls that are in our 20s it's funny to look i'm like oh my god god being in middle school right now would be fucking rough i had that same thought i was social like media. oh my god having social media in middle school would be a nightmare not to put my sister on blast here um but like when 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 lydia when when stacy wrote in to seventh grade rumors instagram account i was like oh my god like the ship that shit really does exist like i like when instagram started becoming a bigger thing i know gia and her like friends had shit like that in middle school which was crazy mm -hmm. um yeah which is wild yeah instagram didn't become a thing until i was in 10th grade end yeah. of 9th going into 10th yeah which i was thankful for and it's, i was not till i was like finishing high school and right and it still wasn't like popping off totally like it was, Facebook like, was where it was at no you posted yeah, like Facebook, really ugly Twitter. photos right with like weird borders but even facebook was fun like it was like On picnic Instagram. photos like yeah. that website yeah. picnic yep um but yes great movie i thought it was really very, highly very highly cool. recommend if you're looking for a cute movie to watch this weekend the second thing I watched was Milf Manor. You know, the one thing I want to add quickly, mm -hmm. last thing, it did really make me wish that we um, could go back in time and go to Noah's Bar Mitzvah. <sighs> I have it never really, been to you know, one, and I was like, damn, these things look fun. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up in like a more Jewish town, I guess. But, yeah. So I went to like a billion. Yeah. But some of them were like crazy. Like some They of them looked were insane. Like, like the richer kids like yeah. had like the some insane I was yeah. so jealous watching I was like damn I guess it's like having people having sweet 16s yeah, but yeah. these look a lot more extravagant um, I watched the first episode of MILF Manor which has been talked about from Cody Co uh, Megan and Ryan Trainer also told us about it on their podcast 
I was scrolling. I saw it pop up. I said, oh, fuck. I forgot to give this show a shot. I have to watch it. What uh, What can that be watched on? HBO Max. Okay. Now, let me tell you the premise of MILF Manor. Okay. All the MILFs show up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they all have their backstory. And you're learning about them. Some sad backstories. Some, you know, typical divorce. They all have kids. Because they're MILFs. They are excited for younger men to come in because that's what they're interested in they're interested in a younger man Mm. and they said oh you know it's so taboo you know a a, a guy can date a younger girl but you know if a a woman dates a younger guy it's looked at you know weird they then bring in the younger men and the younger men are all of their sons (sighs) And they all date each other's sons. <laughs> I, you know, it is. I don't know how these people come up with the this shit. craziest I really show. I have watched. I only watched the first episode because I was like, I am not watching this any further. I said, I'm gonna give. I'm going to watch this first episode. Yeah, and I'm going yeah. to be done yeah, with this because yeah, yeah. I can't give my time to this. But I have to watch the first episode. You want to know what the first challenge was? Yes, I would. All of the men, younger men, early 20s, had to line up with their shirts off. And the moms had to go up to them blindfolded. And and, and, and identify which one's their son? Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's sick. Sick. That That's sick. Sickening show genuinely that's why i was like i cannot continue to watch the show but i have to finish this first episode when they said that was the first challenge i was floored so they had to touch so like each person up and down question yes do the moms and sons know they're signing up for a show that they're both on no like they don't know no, that. so they don't know I, I they must sign something where they like can't leave or something you know like i i'd be out of there so fast they i'd be like i quit they don't know. I left that part out. They don't know. Yeah. And so when they unveil the curtain. It's just crazy to me. All they- of the moms see their sons and all the sons see their moms. And it's like, what? Like, you'd be like, I quit. I'm out of here. And they must make they them must sign. sign something they must make they them sign leave. some shit. And let me tell you how awkward it is when one mom's trying to bang no. one of the sons and her son is getting mad being like, you're not gonna bang this guy on the first night and then the other the guy that she's trying to bang is like oh kelly's trying to get day one strokes that's what he called it kelly the mom is trying to get day one strokes oh this made me ill (laughs) is actually no like had to shut it off oh god um i'm rating it a a f (laughs) because although it is wildly entertaining yeah it's disgusting yeah yeah yeah. like i think this show is disgusting i do the f is it entertaining yes that's why like the f grade is confusing it's just like we have to have a line right like like, just on the basis of the premise of the show you cannot give it a good score right like i just think as a society we need a line like yes was i like draw jaw to the floor stunned by this yeah absolutely yeah but i didn't want to continue it which to me means it's not a good show yeah just a crazy ass premise that should not be continued imagine it was dilf manor and Uh, like i just like sounds your daughter (laughs) yeah like i just can't imagine like how they can continue this show right because they can do this again but they can absolutely not do Dilf Manor. Oh, gosh. Like, that would be crazy. So, yeah. Um, um, yes. So, that's going to get an F for me. Yep. And then I rewatched Miss Americana, Taylor Swift. Mm. I watched it when it first came out, but I wanted something light yes, yesterday while I was cleaning. Give it an A. Yeah. It was good the first it's time. It's good, good the second yeah, time. It's good the rewatch. So, did you finish The Ultimatum? Oh fuck! I know, I know. I had one episode left last night. I shut it off. This puts me in a tough position. You could talk about it. It's fine. I don't want to spoil it. No, anything. you could spoil it. I'm okay. Wait, so if you had one episode left, you just haven't watched the reunion? 
That might be it. Then I watched nine episodes. Well, here's the thing. Did you see them all? Uh, did you see them all either stay together or break up? Yes, except oh. one couple that got cut off. Like, I forget why we changed the channel, but we changed the channel and <laughs> it was like, oh, fuck, what did they say? And then we were like, ah, whatever. Okay, so can I just, can I just, can yeah. we openly discuss? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I finished the ultimatum and honestly, like the first half of the season, way crazier than, than the second half. Uh, all surprisingly, all the couples got engaged, which was shocking to me for some of them. Some of them, it wasn't. Some were shocking. And at the reunion, which I felt like, first I'll just say, I felt like Vanessa and, and Nick handled in a much better manner than past reunions i'll give them credit for that they there's some couples that feel like i don't know and i have not caught up on social media so i don't know like really if anything else has happened since then or what's gone on since the reunion but they brought out lisa and brian and she really had that baby ha baby was born apologies so from us. yes like hand up we were wrong but they showed a clip of the whole cast after they left and they were like is there really like the cast also kind of had the same feeling mm -hmm. so obviously like you know lisa's not gonna be happy about that but she kind of like doubled down on her comments about raya which still felt inappropriate like didn't need to go that far and she defended herself by saying like she felt that raya was gunning for her man so she was gonna go after her holy crap you really did not know what show you were signing like what what world are you living in where you don't think women are gonna be flirting with your with your boyfriend that's the whole premise of the show the whole mm -hmm. premise of the show is you got to flirt with other people to find out which one you like the most so that you yeah. have the marriage with like what is she what is the what are the other girls supposed to do not talk to him because mm -hmm. he he's off limits like that's just not how the show works so i thought that was crazy did not like that from her at all the other women the other couples like good for them i also decided alex and cat like alex just looks exactly like i think if you took the chain smokers and combined the two of them together, mm -hmm. it would be this guy. That's a good point. Like if you took, and this guy's name, his name is yeah. Alex, and if you took Alex and Drew and put him into mm -hmm. one person, I think it would be the ultimatum Alex. Yeah. Because he has Alex Chainsmokers vibes, but then like also kind of has Drew vibes. Like it's just combine them. Um, they had their save the date. They're getting married in May of next year, I think it was. Um, Ryan and... James, I always forget people's names, are also getting married. They seem like they were. I would advise for them to kind of not in to. a in an interesting spot. Um, <laughs> Which I don't know, but that fight that they had, where it was like we saw it happen, like yeah, yeah, through yeah. the night, through the night, yeah. I was like, I don't know. It feels like these two maybe have to work some things out before they get married. I know it is it is hard because you really do see people in their most like vulnerable set settings, right. which is tough. But you know they've made this Raya and. Trey are having a baby that came out like post reunion mm -hmm. so you know they're together making it work and I you know I always had faith in them more because I felt like Raya's reservations were, weren't like a couple thing it was like a, a personal thing mm -hmm. Roxanne I I I feels like she's forcing it I she at the reunion she wasn't wearing her ring she's got nine million rings on her finger she doesn't have a ring it was a whole big conversation she said she basically took off the ring immediately after they got engaged. That she just did, doesn't like the idea of the ring and it's a possessive thing. And like, why does she have to wear a ring if he doesn't have to wear a ring? And he clearly seemed upset by the fact that she wasn't wearing mm -hmm. it and didn't want to wear it. And it felt mm -hmm. like everyone was trying to kind of convince her that, you know, it's a nice gesture to wear it. And maybe they do their own unique thing where he wears a ring also and mm -hmm. they can do it together. And it's something that they Put can the do. band on early. And you know that she kind of entertained that idea, but she is gonna have cold feet every step of the way. 
And I don't They're know how not you gonna make it. Down I don't the know aisle. how you walk down the aisle. And if I'm Antonio, I'd be like, I think it's time to just give it up. What are you gonna fight with her every single step of the way of having to do marriage? She's like, no, not planning, not thinking about it, not. They're not going to make it down the aisle. And the thing is, these two need to let go of each other. They're very attached because they've been together for a long time. That happens to a lot of people. These two need to let go of each other. In my personal opinion. Yeah. They do, he wants to be with her. Yeah. She does not want to be with him. Yeah. She seems like comfortable and likes having him around, but also would be fine if he was gone. Right. But, you know, that's that's all obviously it's all opinion based maybe yeah. maybe something else will happen but it's just it was just very interesting that they all got engaged i will say i did not did not see that coming i did not think a proposal yeah, would know. be happening I didn't, I didn't think so either but because with this show you always expect like one of them is gonna not yeah. do it i think in the end you're we're not gonna see all of them actually get married totally i think they are making that commitment but i think at least one of them Roxanne yeah. is going to end up not walking yeah. down the aisle. Um, I will give the end of that season like a, I don't know. I'll give it like I'll give it a C. It was good, mm-hmm. um, but the the beginning I felt was you know pulled me in way more the beginning of the Same. season. Did you see Love Is Blind is back September twenty second? I was just about to bring that up <laughs> because I put on the first after the altar episode from the last season, and this you know no offense to them whatsoever but boy i could care less that's how i feel about after the altar and my my brain has just moved on to to the next thing like i'm more excited about a new season than i am to find out what what those guys are up to so i had this moment when i went to go put on the ultimatum last night where i saw love is blind new episodes and i said no yeah, no fucking yeah. way is there a new season of love is blind out right now i got so excited i was like fuck yes clicked it realized it was after the after altar, the altar yeah. but then realized that there is a new season coming very yep. shortly yep. so it was like sad but then happy and i was like i'm not watching after the altar because no offense i could give two shits what these people are up no, to I in their not. lives what i will say though very happy for them that so many of them are in good places Mm -hmm. you know that's it's rare but it seems like this was also filmed a long time ago so i I, there could be something that i missed in the news of how these couples are doing in real time this after the altar stuff was filmed months ago so it's been a while um but it does seem like everything has been okay very interesting to me that and like I said I only watched one episode and I'll probably finish it because fuck hell we're what else is there to watch these days like there's no new TV coming out right um besides reality shows but Micah and Paul's mom have like a really close relationship I saw that online and they were like they were out to lunch together and she's talking about keeping this relationship and Paul's mom I don't know if Paul's mom wants Paul's mom wants to be Micah I think wants to like relive her life as Micah Paul's mom just sits there she's like you are so beautiful <laughs> like she just <laughs> really loves her uh which is fine you know but it feels like Paul's you know Paul's talking about dating somebody else I don't know very interesting dynamic between between those two for sure but the other couple seem like they're doing good so what's there really to say about them it's you know mm-hmm. supporting each other Fucking Chelsea still cracks me up. She's just one of a kind. I can't believe those two are still together. Yeah, she just really, she just makes me giggle. She is a one of a kind person. Um, And what else did I watch? I gave the movie score, finished Hard Knocks. Last episode of Hard Knocks. Great season. Enjoyed it. Loved it. Aaron Rodgers just kind of makes me laugh. The last episode he told this uh, UFO story from his, from like 2005 of like being in the draft and being in New Jersey and like totally basically saying a story of how he saw a UFO with his friend and then they saw fighter jets, chase, like this whole thing. They played like alien music behind it. It was just very Aaron Rodgers. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. You poor thing. I feel bad. Okay, <laughs> I, I'll wrap it up. No, great, good. great. Uh, I like the season a lot. I'll give it a B. I enjoyed it. Good, good, good football content going into the new season. I will say like I've had that on the TV, but like, 
have a bit of time. No, totally fine. It's I mean, I'm sure me Matt's watching, watching it, and you're yeah. just like, he's yeah. like, I'm gonna put this on. I'm like, okay. And then I like go on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I catch your thing. I ca- I caught the Sopranos thing because yeah. I was like, did you just put the Sopranos on? And he was like, no, no, just- yeah. <laughs> I actually um, I put it on by myself. Jo- Joe and I normally watch because mm-hmm. Joe's a massive Jets fan, and normally we watch together. But he wasn't home Tuesday night. And I thought he watched it already because he like hasn't. It's been appointment TV for him. Mm -hmm. And he came home on Wednesday and I was watching it and I like paused it so fast. And he was like, walked in, dropped his bag. He was like, "Ah, ah, ah." Like, you're you're watching it. And I, I, I I was almost done with the episode. I lied through my teeth. I was like, I just started it. I can obviously start. I watched the same episode twice. Like I basically finished the whole episode. You have to do that. No, I I was like, yes, 100%. You have to do that. It happened to me last night with the ultimatum. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Uh, I actually, he was like, how much did you really watch? I was like, two minutes. Like we didn't watch it from the beginning again. Two minutes. Like I saw the whole thing. Um, but no, I liked that. And then I wa- we watched, um, uh, but I'm behind on my Bravo stuff. I know I'm behind on Housewives. New season of Salt Lake City started, which I haven't watched yet. I'm excited to watch that. I watched the Shane Gillis Netflix special. Wait, so did I. Great. Very funny. I think he's hilarious. I'll give that like a B plus. I, I was laughing. My, I was laughing. That was I very love funny. when you talk about it. And I'm like, wait, I all, I watched that last I night know. too. <laughs> yeah. So I, sometimes I feel like I, I, you know, I throw things out and you remember. You right. Because I write the things down. Yeah, and yeah. I guess sometimes I just forget to write. Yeah. Some some of like the, not that this is like throwaway, but some of the stuff that you just put on. Like we watched it at like eleven o'clock. You know, mm-hmm. I, you, sometimes you just forget those. That's things. That's what happened. When I watched it like going to bed. Yeah, watch it going to bed. Um, but very funny. Very funny. What did I say? B plus. Is that yeah, what I just said? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm I'm sticking. I'm sticking with that. Very. I enjoyed that for sure. Um. He's a very. He's a very funny guy, and he pushes the boundaries in like a funny way too. You mm-hmm. know. Um, and that's uh. Did I watch any other? Yeah. No. That's it. That's what I watched. I just watched Suits season four. Just kept it, kept it going. Look at I, that ha- I haven't watched Suits in like two weeks. And I watched the Bar Mitzvah movie, which I I enjoyed. Bar Mitzvah, they're girls. Yeah. It's it's like actor actresses. Like it it doesn't matter. Okay. The name of it is Bar Mitzvah. No, I know. You are so not invited to my Bar Mitzvah. I thought you would be more like uh, about the name of it because you are Jewish. No, I know, but. It's just like if I'm referring to like oh all the all the kids in my grade had a bar mitzvah I'm not gonna say all the kids in my grade had a bar and bat mitzvah like it's just kind of general you. yeah it can be used in uh, Makes sense. a mass yeah but that's it plural I, I way great B for the suits just because it's like it's so formulaic like every episode's the same thing I'm mm-hmm. just like it's entertaining but like it's just like okay now the problem a, is solved at the end yeah, of the like, yeah I was gonna I was gonna a problem I was gonna ask. At, Mike Mike yells at someone else and then they Are there any like, episodes where they don't solve the problem? Yeah, but then Sometimes they get solved I think the next they linger okay, okay. and then they get solved Got, in the next gotcha. one. Everything gets solved like Are there times when they lose? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um and uh wait, who's the annoying guy that everyone is annoyed Lewis? with? Lewis? Yeah. Uh he's like he's kind of like hated by everyone right now, but um it's yeah. That's typical. It's still entertaining. And then the typical Lewis. Bot Mitzvah movie. I'll give it B plus as well. I thought that was uh, I thought it was good. B plus is all around for that. Yeah. All right. You know what was interesting to me? It has such a high uh, Rotten Tomatoes it does. audience. I mean, critic score, but not audience score. Normally, it's not. Nor- normally, the Adam Sandler movies go the other way around. Interesting. You know? It has like a ninety seven percent critic score. Yeah. Um, and like a 65% audience score, my which I thought was low. My mom didn't like it, which I was surprised Oh, about. really? Yeah. What's her critique? I don't know what her critique, she was like, it wasn't funny or like, I I, I didn't oh. really get into it, but I was like, I liked it more than oh, you did. Oh, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Interesting. It's funny, two non-Jewish <laughs> girls liked it. Yeah. But not that you have to be, but like, no, but no, like I, yeah. Certain, I think w- I thought it was still very funny like, and relatable you know what middle it made school me, life. It you know? made it was, me really miss Never Have I Ever. Yeah. That yeah. like as I was watching it, I was like, 
fuck i wish never have i ever it's funny because they like really leaned into like the jewish i mean obviously Mm -hmm. it's like about obama too but like i don't know if they ever touched on like what level of uh jew they are like you know how there's like different yeah 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 because they would be like she was like practicing the mirror like do you want to share my matzo balls it's like no one says stuff like yeah I mean, well, I yeah, they were right? playing into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, definitely like still a movie. And I think they also f- probably fed yeah. into a lot of, and I, uh, they, they fed into a lot of stereotypes yeah, as well. I which couldn't like, it seemed like the school is like a Hebrew very school classic Adam thing, Sandler mm-hmm. move. Because you know? like my Hebrew yeah. school is like an after school type thing. Oh, you, you went to another school, but. Still, I think, yeah, I think they made it one thing. It was like one thing, yeah. which is interesting. I still liked it and I would like, Maybe a second movie. <laughs> a second movie, like with them as a family. Like I don't. I'm just yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in the dynamic. Well, yeah. I feel like that's the easiest thing for Adam Sandler because he has like whatever Netflix mm-hmm. deal. Like he didn't. Uh, did he direct that? Or no, I don't think so. So like he didn't direct. He didn't no. write, and he just like is in it for like not that much, <laughs> and probably makes so much money from it. Yeah, yeah. Really easy for him, and just gets to work with his whole yeah. family. Yeah. Um, but hey, yeah. if you can make that work. You, you make that work, so. Yeah. All right, those are the things we watched this week. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you have an amazing weekend. We love you guys, and we'll talk to you on Monday. 